I'm Kirk Jowers and welcome to the FAQs episode of the doTERRA COVID-19 series with Dr. Russell Osgathorpe, the Chief Medical Officer of doTERRA and a board certified pediatric infectious diseases specialist. Thank you so much for watching, commenting and asking questions. Uh, first question, is there evidence that the virus can be spread from infected surfaces? Yes. Um, what we've learned about the virus, there's been some data out of Rocky Mountain National Laboratories that showed that the virus nucleic acid or RNA can be detected on surfaces as long as three days out, depending on the surface. Whether or not that nucleic acid is actually infectious is a separate question, but we know that these types of viruses land on surfaces because we cough them or sneeze them onto surfaces, and then they can be there for a period of time, picked up by hand, moved to our mucous membrane, and then we self-inoculate from a surface to our mouth, to our eyes, to our nose. And the follow-up from that is what about through the air? And if it's airborne, does that mean anywhere outside is dangerous? Okay, that's kind of a complex question. So okay. I'm gonna answer it um, best I can. Okay. So right now for COVID-19, what we know is that it is droplet spread. So that those are droplets that are coughed or sneezed and they go through the air right. and they travel about six feet, three to six feet. So that's where all these recommendations about distance are coming in, right? Is that sneezing, coughing? Can it sneezing be... or coughing. So mm -hmm. not just breathing typically, it has to kind of eject something? There's been some debate on people, uh, on some uh, academic articles suggesting that just breathing can pass the virus through droplets. Um, we are, however, not certain if those are large droplets that only travel six feet or smaller droplets that can travel and remain in the air a longer period of time. Uh. But right now, we do not believe that this is an airborne virus. Okay. Airborne transmission um, are for things like chickenpox, for example, or varicella is its scientific name. That virus is transmitted very efficiently through the air uh. and is an airborne virus. We um, this virus, coronavirus or COVID-19, we feel is a droplet virus, which are large droplets, which we right now understand about the virus only travel three to six feet. Okay. Um, so let's put these into practice. We had uh, a number of questions um, such as, is it safe to go for a drive? Yes, absolutely. As long as the people you're driving with are not infected. Right. <laughs> Right. Um, so, but but that's important distinction, right? Yes, of course, we can go for a drive. But if we put twelve kids into a van, that's a different scenario. And go around the neighborhood picking them up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so every everything has its own risk associated with it. But yes, you can go for a drive. Absolutely. What about kids playing outside, riding their bikes together? Absolutely. Going outside, I, I strongly recommend. As, especially if it's a beautiful day, because we are all feeling stress and being outside reduces stress. However, not all kinds of outside activities are the same from a risk perspective. Riding a bike with a friend is totally different from a risk perspective than walking down a beach with a thousand different people, right? right? One, you're exposing yourself to one human being. The other, you're potentially exposing yourself to thousands and the handrails along the boardwalk and wherever you get a drink of water and kids on a crowded playground you're all same, same thing same thing if things. if we take 20 kids over to a playground cuz we want them to play that playground can be a way that we spread virus from surface to our mucous membranes and so even if they get there and it's empty <laughs> the virus could have been there before you got there, there left you. on that teeter totter and or that merry go round and your kids right. pick it up and get infected so Children are very usually very efficient transmitters of respiratory viruses. So we need to be careful about what we're doing with our young family members. Final question on this grouping is, is it safe to order and eat takeout food? <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of maybe see the world a little bit differently as an infectious diseases physician. Right. So my answer to that question would be yes, as long as the people who are preparing your food and delivering the food are not infected. Which is hard to know. Right. Um, so, uh, but I got a salad at work today from uh, somebody that prepared it. I didn't prepare it myself. Right. Um, 
we, we make risk decisions every day about whether I'm going to the grocery store or whether I'm going to go on a walk with my wife outside. And then while on that walk, do I stop and say hi to the other neighbor who's on a walk as well? These kinds of decisions are low risk, but if we do enough of them, those risks compound and we could potentially get infected. Thank you and thank you for joining us.